We're not talking about a democracy. We're not talking about we can vote God in and vote God out. In every kingdom, there is a king. The Bible declares that in the kingdom of God, that there is only one God. That is Psalms chapter 24, verse 10. Who is the king of glory? The Lord of heaven's armies. He is the king of glory. Revelation chapter 19, verse 16. And he has on his robe and on his thigh a name written, King of kings and Lord of lords. John chapter 18, verse 37. Pilate therefore said to Jesus, Are you a king then? And Jesus answered, You say rightly that I am a king. Jesus is the king. We need to realize that in God's kingdom, there is always a king. And every king has to have a kingdom. So we have a choice. There is the kingdom of God, and then there is the kingdom of the earth. Turn with me to Mark chapter 8 real quickly. Mark chapter 8, verse 36. The Bible declares, For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? What I'm trying to show you about this kingdom of earth is that there is a kingdom, but it still has to have a king. You and I will never be the king. So many people I was talking to a young man that, sadly enough, was in my youth group way back in 1988. And it was his birthday, so I sent him a happy birthday. And I said, happy birthday, man of God. And he sent back a little message, I'm not sure about the man of God. And I said, are you serving Satan? And his response was, no, I'm serving myself. You see, we actually believe there is a kingdom on this earth to where we are king. But we can never be king because we are not supernatural of ourselves. We are eternal, but we ourselves have not even a power enough to heal the, the, the wing on a fly. We don't have the ability to move here or there in the spirit realm. We don't have the ability. We do not have a kingdom. If you're a king, you must have a kingdom. So man has deceived himself in believing that I'm living my life for myself, that I am the king of my own world, that I am the king of my own universe. But the truth is, is that what shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? There is no kingdom for mankind without one or the other. The Bible declares in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 25, because of the foolishness of God is wiser than man, and the weakness of God is stronger than man. Matthew chapter 24, verse 35, heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will by no mean pass away. I want to remind you in the book of Genesis chapter 1 that God created the heavens and the, this is the kingdom of earth. When Adam and Eve committed high treason, they became an independent from God. When they became independent, they no longer were under his kingdom. That's why they could no longer be in the Garden of Eden. That's why they had to have the blood of animals to cover their sins. Without the shedding of blood, the book of Hebrews says, there is no forgiveness of sin. You see, when Adam and Eve committed high treason, they severed that relationship with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords in the intimacy factor. And therefore, now they could never be holy in the presence of God himself. Man, you and I, will never be the king of our own kingdom because our kingdom cannot last. It doesn't matter how much money you make. You can be the richest man or woman in the world. Your kingdom will pass away. There was a, a, a computer uh, genius, we, we know, Steve Jobs. Extremely, extremely, extremely wealthy. But when he died, what did he have? See, kingdoms have to perpetuate and continue or will not end. And there are only two of them. So the self-deception is that, well, you know what? 
I might not serve God. I might not live in his kingdom. I might not have the blood of Jesus washing my sins away. I might not be saved and set free. I might not be in the kingdom of God, but I am not a Satan worshiper. I am not in the kingdom of hell. But the truth is, is that you can only serve one or the other. That deception is that we are our own Lord, we are our own King, and that is a, an enormous self-deception that we have to burst. And this is why I'm preaching it to you this morning. The Spirit of God said to me, he said, tell them the true King is waiting for his true people. The kingdom of Satan is the third kingdom. Then the devil's. Taking Jesus up on a high mountain showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said to Jesus, all this authority I will give to you and their glory, for it has been delivered to me, and I will give it to whomever I wish. Therefore, if you will worship before me, all will be yours. Satan is not the God of the earth, for God, the earth is his footstool. The cattle on the thousand hills are the Lord's. But Satan is the king or the Lord over the world system. He runs how this world is being run because Adam and Eve gave them, gave, excuse me, gave Satan the dominion that he was given in the garden. When Adam and Eve committed high treason, they surrendered the dominion, Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, and God said, let us create man in our image and in our likeness, and God gave him dominion over the fish of the sea, dominion over the earth, dominion over the fly, dominion. Dominion means the authority, and you cannot have authority without a backer. And so what happened was, when Adam and Eve surrendered their dominion, they surrendered their, their authority, they surrendered their posture and position in the kingdom of God, they handed that over to Satan, and now he has a lease. This is how he could take Jesus, the Son of God, up on that high mountain and say, see all of this, this whole kingdom is mine, and if you worship me, I will give it to you. See, Satan has a real kingdom. You know, we talk about Satan worshipers, and we talk about Reiki, and we talk about, uh, you know, seances, and we talk about mediums, and we talk about all those things. The scripture is so very clear that they're all damned. Anybody who plays with that stuff is damned. Well, the reason it's damned is because it's a paradigm of the kingdom of God. There are only two gods, small g, big g. There are only two lords, large L, small L. But they both have a kingdom that is so vastly organized and so perpetuating through eternity. You see, this is the power of learning that we, ha we have a king and there is a kingdom. And whatever king you serve is the kingdom that you participate with. And the kingdom you participate with is the kingdom you receive the benefits and the consequences of. Whatever kingdom you serve, you receive the consequences, the life flow, the, the juice, as it would be, into your life. Well, I don't serve Satan. Listen, you know, where I was from in Fitchburg, Massachusetts area, behind the hospital, it was very well known that there was a satanic church. In a town near me, there was another one called the Church of the Wildwood. Cats and animals would disappear every every Halloween. No, really, they sacrifice them. It was not abnormal, and we, we all knew about what was going on behind, behind uh, up in Fitchburg. They had a large pentagram. I had a friend of mine who actually saw the event, and there was a large pentagram, and you know, there's doctors, and there's lawyers, and there's, you know, there's every kind of individual that you could be. It's not just, you know, the poor people serve Satan. Let me tell you, many of the people serving Satan are the people that are the richest people of the entire world. The first church of Satan was Anton LaVey, and we find it, come on now, right out, right out in California. And a lot of the movie stars were part of and literal members of the first church of Satan. We kind of laugh at this. Listen, the, the, did you even know there's a Bible, the Satanic Bible? Literally a Bible written for Lucifer that his people follow. 
We see the delusion is that you are a Satan worshiper if you are the one that are, oh, let me tell you what was happening. What they did is they, they were all naked around the pentagram. And they sacrificed a virgin in the middle. Oh, not, not cut her heart out. They all had sex with her. Sacrificial of a virgin. That was part of their worship. Listen, I guarantee you that the majority of people, even the Wicca, you know, the Wiccan witches and, oh, but that's white magic. Baby, there's only one kind of magic, and that's the devil's magic. Wicca is not from God. Wicca is demonic, and they have a king, and his name is Lucifer. Reiki has a king, and his name is Lucifer. Mediums have a king, and his name is Lucifer. Oh, I want to be very clear. Because there's a need for an awakening within the body of Christ. Very few people are running around. Come on now. Very few are walking, running around with a pentagram and sacrificing the virgin in the middle. But a lot of us feel, and the world believes, that as long as they're doing good, then they're okay. The only way to become part of the kingdom of God is through the blood of Jesus Christ. It's through a relationship with the living God. It's the one who came and died for our sins and washed us clean so that we can stand before the living God with purity. And God will say, this is my beloved son. This is my son. This is my daughter. John chapter 1 declares that he's given us the right to be called children of God. How? Through the blood of Jesus Christ. Nothing but the blood of Jesus Christ. Christ. There's nothing but the blood of Jesus Christ. Woo! There's nothing but the blood of Jesus Christ. There are only two kingdoms. The Bible declares in 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 4, whose mind the God of this age has blinded, who do not believe, lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ. John chapter 12, verse 31. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be cast out. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 2, in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince and the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience. So here's the clarity for all of us. If we are not serving God in his kingdom, if we're not serving King Jesus, then we are serving King Lucifer. i got to say it again. Because I believe there's a delusion that's come upon the body of Christ. That I can do whatever I want to do, and I'm still going to heaven. Hello. That's a lie. Well, I said that prayer when I was six. Well, that's beautiful. But you're living like hell right now. Don't be in the delusion. It's not a secret little magic prayer. It's a relationship through the blood of Jesus Christ. Can I hear an amen? You see, we cannot allow the delusion to come upon us. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. That means if there's a kingdom of God, there is a king. And if we're serving the king, then he is the one who creates his kingdom. See, an American, we, we are brought up in America. And in America, we have a very democratic mindset. The democratic mindset is, I will vote people in and I will vote people out. I will give my opinion when I want to. Listen, we have freedom of speech. Thank God for America. Can I hear an amen? But you see, what happens is, we start listening to all of that, and then we believe that that's how God's kingdom runs. God's kingdom does not run by a democratic mindset. God's kingdom is that there is a king, and the king sets the rules. I can't hear you this morning. You see, every one of us have a choice. We will serve one master or the other. For those who say, well, you know, I'm just kind of in limbo. No, you're not. You're worshiping Satan. Now, I need to let this settle a little bit because I believe that a lot of us are drunken in this delusion. We've allowed 
the Christianity of America to penetrate not truth. Listen, how many of you know you're not perfect? If you're married, how many of your spouses have told you you're not perfect? How many of you know your spouses aren't perfect? We're not talking perfection. We're talking that we submit ourselves. We have made a choice. This is the powerful part about having free will choice. It is the greatest, worst thing that God has ever given us. The greatest because we choose what kingdom we want to serve. We choose who we want to have as our God. We choose who is going to be our Lord. We choose who is going to be our King. The delusion comes when we think after we've chosen, we can tell the king how to run his kingdom. There has to be a shift within us. There has to be a change within us. There has to be a mindset, renewal, hallelujah. We renew our minds by the washing of the word of God. The word will change our minds. Why? Because the Bible makes a declaration in Joshua chapter 24, verse 15. If, and if it seems evil for you to serve the Lord, choose for yourself this day who you will serve. Whether the gods which your father served, which were of the other side of the river, or the gods of the Ammonites in whose land you dwell, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Matthew chapter 6, verse 24, no one can serve two masters. He will either hate one and love the other, or else he'll be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and money. See, that's, that's the big thing. Where I really believe the Spirit of God wants to get in our spirit this morning and get in our, our spiritual mind is that if you're not following the king, then what king are you following? And if you think you're the king, I'm just living my own life, doing whatever I want to do, man, don't talk to me that way. Then you've allowed a lie to penetrate your truth. We've been, I, I, I mentioned it last week. It's called truthiness. Truthiness is when you believe something 100% that it's true, even though it's a lie. And a lot of people are in this truthiness moment. Where, you know what? I'm not serving the devil. I'm not running around pentagrams, sacrificing virgins. I don't have the, I don't have the satanic Bible. I, I'm not a member of the, of the satanic church. But what happens is this, is when we look at that, we say, yeah, you know, I'm not doing that stuff, but I'm living for myself. Listen, if you're living for yourself, there is only one other God before, besides the God of heaven, and that is the God called Lucifer. I know this is not a popular message, but do you know something? Seek ye, seek ye, seek ye, seek ye first. God has a key. It's called the keys to the kingdom. And this is the very first key. And if we allow the church, the body of Christ, if we allow the, the kingdom of God to remain in this mindset that I can do whatever I desire to do, live any way I want, I am my own God, yet I submit because I don't want to go to hell. The truth is you have not submitted at all. You see, every kingdom demands loyalty. Loyalty is a lost word today. Is that not true? People aren't really, it's, it's, it's a strange thing to find a loyal person. Divorce being the height that it is, 50 plus percent. Jobs used to be loyal to their employees and employees used to be loyal to their jobs. People could work at one location 45, 50 years. Retire, not have to worry about someone stealing their retirement. 
There was a loyalty factor that was penetrated. It was a normal fabric of our lives. But yet over the years, listen, and I believe it's, it's that demonic influence in the world. And I don't believe that it is a mistake. I believe that the devil doesn't run around with a little suit with a red tail, with a pitchfork, saying, here I am. I believe he slowly slinks his way into the world. He is like an angel of light. He slinks in and slowly starts removing the principles that will allow us to accept tell within the kingdom. Oh, come on now, this is good. I told you it was not going to be, uh, we're not going to be milky this year. So what happens is when we allow these things, these lies, this truthiness to get into our life and to slowly sap away and to tear away the fabric that allows the clothing to stay together, then we live a life of being naked, yet with the delusion that we're clothed. Come on now. When the fabric, the very fiber of a fabric is released, it cannot hold to itself. Listen, Jesus addressed this in the book of Revelation with the church of Laodicea. He said, you are naked, but you think you're all clothed. Come buy from me. Golden, come on, come buy. I'll put on new clothes. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anybody hear and open the door, I will come in and sup with him and he with me. Jesus was not talking to the world. He was talking to his church. Man, scholars declare and believe in dispensationalism that the church of Laodicea is the church of America today, the church of the world today, as the delusion has swept through. And now people are serving churches. They're serving preachers. They're serving their religion. But they're not part of the kingdom of God. God has called us to be in his kingdom, and there can only be two gods, and there must be loyalty. What is loyalty? It's a state of quality of being loyal. Faithfulness to the commitments or obligations. Faithful adherence to a sovereign, a government, a leader, and a cause. You know, I've had a lot of people, people who leave the church, they say certain things about me. Very interesting things. One of the things that uh, uh, a group of people left and they, you know, stomping their feet out the door and they were mad at me. The thing that they said was, be careful, he expects loyalty. Well, thank you for that compliment. Because I do. I believe loyalty to a vision is imperative to the conclusion that God has called. I believe if there's not loyalty, listen, how many of you go and, and, and listen, uh, well, uh, how do I say this? See, what happens is we're on TV, so you can't just always drop brands. You get in trouble. So you go to your local supermarket, and they have the local supermarket brand, and right next to it, they have the popular brand. Most people are going to walk in, even if there's 50 cents difference in price, and they're going to buy the popular brand. One thing that people strive to do in the publicity and in the, the marketing process is create a loyalty to the brand. It's so funny. I was down, and some of you can help me. I was down in Watkins Glen one day, and I saw this man walking around, with a big uh, coat on that said Viagra. And I said to myself, there's something wrong here. There is a race car driver, and on his car is Viagra. Not Viagra. Viagra! And here's this guy walking around Watkins Glen with this big, big jacket on that said, not Viagra. Viagra. The man is loyal to his brand. See, loyalty is expected in our world. If your spouse commits adultery, how many of you know that that's not a good thing? 
doesn't shine good. And loyalty is breached. We look at all these things, and many times we, we, we live within them. We, how many of you are loyal to a road? Oh, come on now. There's a certain road you have always gone down. And you will always go down that road. Now, my wife and I, we didn't always drive together to church. In fact, we usually did not drive together to church. And what happened one day, we drove together to church, and, and I'm coming to the exit in Horseheads, and I go down the exit, go down along the service road, and, and usually take, uh, which road is that? Grand Central. So I'm, I'm putting my blinker on. She goes, what are you doing? I said, I'm, I'm going to church. She goes, just go straight. Hit road 13, swing around, and come in. I said, no. She said, now listen, she said, I didn't say I was right. Yes, she did. She said, mine's faster. True. Yeah, I remember. <laughs> mine's faster. We actually at one point timed. I timed the roots. Because we're even loyal to roads. But most people are more loyal to roads, loyal to the shampoo, loyal to our cereal, than we are loyal to our God. Our cereal will give us a boost in the morning, but the word will change your life. We'll eat the cereal and skip the word because we're loyal to the cereal but not loyal to the word. See, there is a loyalty that is mandated within the kingdoms. You heard me say kingdoms. Every king demands loyalty of his people. God said, John chapter 14, verse 15, if you love me, keep my commandments. See, the king rules his kingdom not the people that are in the kingdom. That's different from democracy. And that's why Americanizing church is so dangerous. Because Americanizing church means that you can... I, I had people say to me, I'm done with this God stuff. He didn't do what I asked him to do. That's Americanized. Who are you to tell the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords what to do? It's even messed up in some of our families. As I've watched children walk up to their parents and say, you're going to buy me this. Okay, Johnny, I'll buy it later. Listen, my kids tried that with me. Excuse me. Who are you? One child once told me, it was actually Kiki just recently. <laughs> she tried to tell me something. And I said, listen, I don't want to hear it. Well, you need to listen to me. I said, no, I don't. I'm the parent. You're the child. Be quiet. You see, what's missing in today's families is discipline and loyalty. Don't clap too loud. Don't clap too loud. What's missing in the kingdom of God is loyalty and discipline. Because when church folk get disciplined in America, they get mad and go down the street. Don't tell me what to do. There's got to be a loyalty to the kingdom of God. And within loyalty is the principles of the king. And that is the king sets up the rules. So if you are living like hell, don't be shocked when you end up there thinking you're going to heaven. Are you out there this morning? You see, this is where God's going to hone us to become more powerful because God cannot pour his anointing through people who are not pure. God would rather use an ass 
than a human that is in rebellion. Mm, I didn't figure that was going to even get one amen, and I only got one and a half. The king determines the kingdom's culture and community. The king sets the principles of the kingdom. We either obey the king's decrees or choose to leave the kingdom. Want me to read that one again? We either obey the king's decrees or choose to leave the kingdom. Well, pastor, that's not a good way to build the church. Everybody's beautiful. I just want you all to know today you're going to be blessed. And that all the world is going to be coming to your, your footstool. That everything you touch will flourish and be blessed. You are blessed all the time. Love, love, love. Love. Listen, I don't have a problem preaching blessing. But if we read this verse clearly, Matthew 6.33, Seek ye the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and then all these things will be added to you. See, that's the key. When other things come before the king, it means he's not your king. I, I know I'm being confrontational this morning, but you see, I really believe that God wants to bring a transition to this church. I believe that this is a year of change for some of you who have been Christians for so long and you continue to see nothing powerful in your life. The reason there's nothing powerful is because you have divided loyalties. A divided loyalty means you cannot be focused in serving one. You must serve two. Divided loyalties destroy because nothing that is divided. Even Jesus made the declaration about the devil. If the devil's kingdom is divided against itself, it cannot stand. Yet we live our lives. We do what we want to do. We act the way we want to act. We live the way we want to live. We set our own priorities and get mad at God, the king, when he doesn't bow to us. Life without loyalty in the kingdom is a lie. God expects loyalty in his kingdom. Just like Satan expects loyalty in his kingdom. Satan demands loyalty. You've heard me tell the story before about my friend uh, uh, who, who, from Massachusetts. His name is Lenny. They went to uh, Haiti. And this was many years ago. He we went to Haiti, and they were doing evangelism up into the mountains. And so what they would do is you, the roads only go so far. So the missionary and Lenny and the group that were with him came to the end of a road. And when they got to the end of the road, they had to walk up a trail, they said, a few hours to get to the next village where they were going to do, you know, gospel messages. It's not abnormal in the country of Haiti and many other third world countries to have witches and to have uh, medicine people and, you know, to have people that are worshiping the devil and releasing energy, the power of the Satan on people. And they looked up and there's a woman coming down the trail. Long hair, dress. The closer the woman got, they realized it's not a woman at all. It's a man. As the man got near, they walked over and said, what's happening, sir? And he said, my master is done with me. See, he was a witch doctor. He was casting spells. He was conjuring up demons. He was, through demonic power, casting off and putting on spirits of sickness. But when his master was done with him, he afflicted him with boils. They said when you looked at the man, his, his face was covered with boils. His body was covered with boils. And they were just weeping pus. He said, when my master was done with me, this is what he did. You see, Satan demands loyalty, but gives no loyalty until he's done with you. 
See, he's not going to be a loyal king in the lake of fire. He's not going to be a loyal king when he's bound for a thousand years. He's not going to be a loyal king to you unless you are giving him what he wants. And Satan expects loyalty from his subjects. And when he's done, he is disloyal because he's the father of disloyalty and rebellion. See, the fall of Satan was because he was disloyal to the king. He said in Isaiah 14, I will raise myself above God and I will be God. His disloyalty, his lack of yielding to the king of kings and the Lord of lords got him cast out of heaven down to the earth. And here we are. We look at the rebellion of Satan. The Bible declares in the book of, where is that? In the book of, in the book of, in the book of. 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 23. Rebellion is as sin as the witchcraft. There's two types of rebellion. You got active rebellion. Active rebellion is when a child looks at you and says, I'm not doing what you want no matter what you say. How many have ever had a teenager in your family? Don't tell me what to do. Active rebellion. It's right out there, baby. I'm going to tell you how I think. I'm going to tell you how I feel. And I'm not going to do what you want me to do. I don't care what you say. Let me tell you what. I'd rather have active rebellion any day than passive rebellion. What's passive rebellion? Passive rebellion is this. I'll do what you want to your face, but down inside I'm still standing. I'll do what you want to appease you, but inside I'm still doing whatever I want to do in my own opinion. I am my own God, which is a lie because now you're serving Satan, the father of lies. Ooh, come on now. This right here will either realign us. Listen, I, I've said it for years. If you're not going to serve God, what in the world are you doing in church? What are you, out of your stinking mind? Stay in bed. Get drunk. Screw around. Get crazy. Because whomever God you serve is the consequences that you'll be receiving. And if you're not going to serve the King of kings and the Lord of lords and spend your eternity with Jesus Christ washed by the blood of the Lamb, but you are going to follow Satan to the far end of the stick, even in the delusion to think that you are your own God. Baby, serve Satan well. I've never heard that from a preacher. I just... I don't understand why people live good when they're going to hell. I, if, I'm, if I'm not serving my king, then I'm going to serve the king. If I'm not serving Jesus and living righteous, be ye holy for I am holy, living righteous before my God, then I'm going to serve Satan, baby, and I'm not going to do it halfway. I'm going all the way. And if I'm going to serve the devil and I'm going to end up in the lake of fire with him forever, I'm going all the way with the devil. It's a horrible delusion to think that if you're a good person, you're going to heaven. Or you're sincere, you're going to heaven. Or you do just enough to go to heaven. This is about relationship. And you either love God or you don't. You either love God or you don't. He is either your king or he's not. You are either loyal to his kingdom or you're loyal to yourself, which is the kingdom of hell. Are you out there this morning? You see, whether it's active rebellion or passive rebellion, rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. And rebellion is the devil's delusion and the devil's drink. Matthew chapter 7, verse 13 and 14. Enter by the narrow gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And there are many who go by it, not few. Because narrow is the gate and difficult is the way that leads to life. And there are few that find it. This is where we all come to this place. Now, now listen, how many of you have been stupid before? Twice. 
All right, three times. I've been stupid a lot. We're not talking stupid. You see, because you can be loyal and not always be smart. But when you're loyal, you always come back to the king, especially when conviction comes. Everybody say, thank Jesus for conviction. The question is, are you serving God, the king? Is your king sitting on the throne of your life? Oh, you know what I forgot this morning? I was going to get the Satan mask. And I was going to sit here with Satan mask on. Because there is only one king. And if you're living your own life, God is not your king. If you're doing your own thing, making your own rules, living your own culture, he's not your king. And I really believe in my spirit. Now, this is the worst part because God always deals with me first. Is that a lot of us need to really ask ourselves this question. Who am I serving? Honestly. Who am I serving? Who is my king? Because who your king is, is who you are living like. And when you make that determination, if you're not living right, you can get right. Thank God for the blood. Thank God for mercy and grace. Can I hear an amen? If you need mercy, give mercy. Come on, can I hear a shout? But if you're living for the king, your life will be the flow from the tree. For we are the vine. Excuse me. He is the vine, and we are the branches. And our sap flows up, not down. Can I hear an amen? Choose you this day whom you shall serve. And when you choose, run all the way, baby. Be loyal to the king. I am loyal to a fault. I will buy things even though they're more expensive. I will go to specific stores even though I know there are better stores. Because I'm loyal to people. I would rather be loyal and pay a little bit more than to be disloyal and disrespectful. Can I hear an amen? Bow your head with me this morning. Hallelujah. I know these messages are strong. They do get less forthright here in the year. I can't wait to start sharing the benefits of the kingdom. But you see, you can't make sure, you can't share the benefits of the kingdom till you're making sure you're in the kingdom. It'd be horrible. It'd be horrible if I got up here in the first of the year and said, bless going in and bless going out. Come on, I share with you all the blessings of the king. Wait till you hear all the blessings that the king has for you. It is absolutely phenomenal. So many of us are living substandard Christian lifestyles. But you see, if I shared all the blessings and you actually were not serving the king, then you would expect the king's hand the king's scepter, the king's blessing when you're serving the wrong king. See, this morning, I need you, and I don't care how many years you said you've been saved. It's not just how you start, it's how you finish. I need you to ask yourself an honest question. If King Jesus asked you to do something today that was absolutely uncomfortable, would you do it? If, listen, I'm not not saying this is what he's saying, but I know this is a, a little stab in us. If King Jesus told you to empty your entire bank account 
and sell your most prized possession, would you do it? Most Christians would not. Because they're the king of their own stuff. Who is your king today? 